Narrative is something which I've been thinking about for quite a while now, and I think I've recently cracked the code. Masochist is a game which kind of needs a story in order to drive it forwards. Super Displacement worked without a story due to the fact that it makes no attempt to be an engaging experience in the same way that Masochist does. Until recently, I had settled on the idea of a narrator character. The narrator character would be about 80% of the actual story in the game. The original idea was that there would be this other spaceman talking to the player through a telecommunicator. After spending a day writing a general script for him, I realised that I'm really, really terrible at writing. I revised the script again, but it was still terrible because nobody speaks like that. I even spoke to a friend of mine who comprehensively understands characterization, but even that didn't help. So recently, a few days ago, I took a few hours while I was playing another game to figure out what to do. I could keep pushing forward and get better at writing until I finally have something passable, but then the thought occurred to me that I could actually just get rid of character development altogether and still leave the story intact. So this is a sci-fi setting, so it's super easy to create a kind of character that doesn't need characterization, and that's just an AI. In particular, I'm referring to the type of AI which doesn't have a personality, one that's closer to a program than an actual artificial intelligence. The point is that it allows me to drive forward the story by informing the player of relevant information without making me do something that I'm just bad at. I think the general principle of having done this is quite useful to know in any case. As a game developer, and especially as a one-man team, you need to know what your limits are, and you have to figure out a way around them. Mike Bithell is still the perfect example of this, having made all the characters in Thomas Was Alone squares and rectangles of varying shapes and sizes, since he didn't have the skills required to make the more detailed sprites. And as a result of knowing his limits and circumventing them, Mike Bithell made a fantastic game. I also really hope I haven't pronounced his name wrong, I just realised I might be pronouncing his name wrong. The point is, if you are working as a one-man team, you're not going to be great at everything, and you're inevitably going to have strengths and weaknesses, and it's not going to always be the best choice to become the jack of all trades. If Supergiant Games decide to make a bastard-themed first-person arena shooter, that'd be really bizarre and they might not do it so well. Similarly, if Vlambeer attempted to make a slow-paced story-based game with 0% screen shake, it might not turn out as well as Luftrausers did. These companies are teams of multiple people, and even they don't have a skill set which spans all the necessary areas of expertise to make a truly varied portfolio of games. One person has no hope of attaining all those skills at once. Just to be clear, this isn't a testament against improvement and you shouldn't take it that way. However, if you're making a game, don't aim for the stars on the other side of the planet. Aim to make the best out of your strengths, and don't make yourself rely on your weaknesses. And uh, yeah, there's a kind of short video, but... Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos regarding game development, productivity, general rambling about massacres, and oh boy, this list really does get longer and more convoluted every video. You'd think by now I would have figured out, or I would have written something down so I at least say the same thing every time. Uh, I guess not. Also, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, devlog number 10 is going to be delayed for an extra three days due to what I talked about in this video, meaning that I have basically scrapped three days of work. <laughs>